Although they are often hidden from view, because they are packed in housings, machines and devices, it is impossible to imagine life today without printed circuit boards. Printed circuit boards connect and hold electronic components, making them work. In an age where there are more and more electronic things, like cell phones, computers, electric cars, and even smartwatches, circuit boards are becoming increasingly important. From rockets to televisions, race cars, ovens, and LED lights. Almost everywhere has one or even more circuit boards in it. Depending on where a PCB is to be used and what it needs to be able to do, there are different types of PCBs and also different materials. We will now take a brief look at a fairly common structure and some of the materials that are used. The first thing you notice is the green color. The green color on the PCB surface is called solder mask. This is a varnish that serves as a protective layer for the things that are on and in the board. On the surface you can see lines, areas, and circles. These are the so-called soldering areas and conductors. The holes and areas are protected with a layer of gold. Instead of gold, other metals can be used. Then the uncovered metallic areas would be silver. The white lines, numbers and letters are called legend print. It marks where which components will be placed and soldered later. The printed circuit board itself consists of a hard core made of fiberglass fabric and epoxy resin. It is called prep reg. Very many, very thin glass filaments, woven like a piece of cloth, are held together with the resin as an adhesive. Glass fibers are at the same time very strong and still somewhat flexible. They also withstand high temperatures well, which is important for the manufacture and processing of printed circuit boards. On one or both sides, the core is further cladded with a thin layer of copper. Copper is a reddish-orange metal, which is also used to make heating pipes or coins, for example. However, the copper used for circuit boards is much cleaner and purer. Thanks to the copper, electrical signals, i.e. current, can later flow through the circuit board. This is because copper is a so-called conductive material. Printed circuit boards can also consist of more than two copper layers. However, we will stick to a simple variant for now. First of all, of course, you have to think about how the circuit board should look. Where to put holes and where not to put holes. Where you need conductors. And where not. This is done on the computer. With this data, the machines know how the circuit boards should look. Like this circuit board here for example. It consists of the yellowish core, which is 1.5 millimeters thick. On top, there is a layer of copper. This is only 35 micrometers thick. That's only half as much as a human hair. Then the holes are drilled, which were previously created on the computer together with the lines and surfaces as a copper layout. The copper is still thoroughly cleaned and freed from dust and oxidation. Oxidation is something similar to rust. Then a blue protective layer is applied to the copper on top. This layer is called resist. On this resist now comes a film as a photo mask. Here you can already see all the fine lines and circles. Now the whole thing is exposed to light. Where the photo mask lets the light through, the blue protective layer becomes darker. Because it cross-links. In other words, it reacts chemically. These areas are now exposed. The copper, i.e. the conductors and surfaces, should remain in these dark areas. Now everything that was not exposed is removed and you can see the copper layer there again. Only where you want to have the ladder afterwards, there is still the blue protective layer on top. Now you can remove all the copper you don't need with a chemical liquid. This is called etching. And because the liquid doesn't get to the places where the blue protective layer is still on, the copper remains on the plate underneath. This last protective layer is now also removed. This is called stripping. Now only the conductors and solder pads are left that are needed. These are now coated with the green solder resist, 
which is exposed like the blue layer before, i.e. the photoresist. The unexposed areas are removed again and the free copper areas are coated with a layer of nickel and a very thin layer of gold. As mentioned at the beginning, a PCB can also have many copper layers. This is called multi-layer. Thank you.